you are welcome to my channel thanks for visiting remembering to subscribe sharing all my presentations and listening to this very one today it is all about a familiar medication that is pretty important in fact it is a life-saving medication and it is nalozone the commonest brand name available here is NAC. Okay, so many families have suffered, so many families have lost loved ones due to opioids overdose. So opioid dead should stop. So from the beginning of this presentation, I'm laying emphasis on 911. Call 911 whether or not you have the nalozone to administer call 911 you are sure this is opioid overdose or you're not sure even with nalozone around call 911 please although this presentation is all about nalozone but i want to quickly branch and do something important I want to go through the clinical presentation of opioid overdose before we delve deeper into the medication called nalozone on its own. So when somebody is under the influence of opioid overdose, he or she may be quiet or not talking, not because they choose not to talk, but they can't talk. They may lose consciousness. He or she may be vomiting. There may be choking sounds or death wrath. Okay? And then, if the situation is bad, then they may have stopped breathing altogether. Or, if they are still lucky, not having uh, breathing stop permanently, they can have abnormal breathing. You no? Know? Erratic, shallow kind of breathing, just abnormal respiration. Okay, and if they are still talking and breathing, the speech might be slurred speech, and the muscles will be weak. Okay, because we want to help them, you don't run away. Okay, please don't run away. Look closely, move closer, and look for nalozone. They may have nalozone in the bag or in their pocket. Okay, if you're able to see that, great. You'll see what you can do very soon. I will take you through what you can do. Then check for the head card mm -hmm. or anything to identify them. Maybe driver's license, passport, identity card, depending on the country, whatever, so that you might be able to allow the family members or anybody bearing that name or even through their phone if it is open see you know somebody that you can contact so that in the end you will not be blamed okay then if you are able to find any info about patient or family member that would be helpful okay and call somebody else around for help don't do it alone then check for bottles or needles to give you a sign about what could have caused this, all right? Then if you are in the health field, you can check for pallor. If you are not, you can see scratch marks. When you see scratch marks, that is an indication, one of many indications that it is likely going to be opioid, you no? Know, because pruritus will lead to, you know, itching and scratching and scratch marks will be formed. Then, you can look for bluish purple skin in light skinned people and grays in black. Then, the, when you open the eyelids and you look through the pulpy, it will be constricted. In cocaine, it will be dilated. In opioid, it will be constricted. It, it, it will shrink, okay? Then, if you are in health feed or you can feel the pulse, then it was going to be low that is going to be bradycardia so in that case if you're able to see all the stuff i've seen you know on the previous slide and this very one that is pointing to opioid overdose then this presentation is for you it could be under 
you know, different brand names depending on the one available in your jurisdiction. Nakan, as well as Nalozone Edochloride, Lifevance Nalozone, or FZO that has been discontinued. I'll talk more about that in a bit. Discontinuation by July 7, 2021. That is last month, FZO has been discontinued. FZO nalozone and the chloride solution for both IM also killed all been discontinued. If you want to know more about what has happened to FZO, please contact your pharmacist for further information. It belongs to the class of medications known as opioid antagonist. The other time during my introduction, I have alluded to the fact that nalozone is a life-saving medication. Opioid has claimed so many lives, so it's pretty helpful in reversing the effects of opioid, although that might treat the individual to opioid withdrawal symptoms. I will address all that here. So, in summary, Nalozone is an antidote. Could appear in various forms, like preferred syringe kit injection. In that case, we can find that under the brand name Lifefence Nalozone, 2 mg per 2 ml, or preservative free preferred kit injection. And that could be generic nalozone, 2 mg per 2 ml. Could also appear in form of solution as auto injector, that would be as nalozone hydrochloride. FCO could be found as auto injector, but it has been discontinued. We now have generic auto injector and preservative free as 2 mg and 0.4 mil. Could be a form of solution cartridge that could be given as injection as nalozone hydrochloride. In that case, we will find the generic 0.4 milligram per mil. A form of solution for injection as hydrochloride, generic 0.4 milligram per mil or 4 milligram in time mil. Could be in form of liquid per nasal spray. In that case, we can find NACAN, 4 mg per 0.1 ml. Administration. Intravenously, we can give nalozone. In that case, we can push over 30 seconds if undiluted. But you give it slowly intravenously if diluted. For example, 1 ml of nalozone with 9 ml of normal saline will give us 0.04 mg per ml. Still on administration, you can give nalozone as continuous infusion. We will dilute to 4 microgram per ml in normal saline or D5 water. You may give it intraosseously if you can get IV line. You may give it intramuscularly if no IV line is available. You can also go ahead and give it subcutaneously if you cannot set IV line. Still on administration, auto injector will be available. If you are outside the hospital because opioid overdose, you no, know, toxicity can occur anywhere on top of the mountain, on the farm, in the bush while hiking, you now sailing on the sea, or canoeing somewhere, playing soccer on the field, just naming anywhere or camping. So you grab the auto injector and administer it intramuscularly or subcutaneously, no intravenous use here, and you can give that to the anterolateral you know, part of the thigh, even with the cloth on or without the cloth. 
All you need to do is to save that life and you do that pretty quickly. But the journey has not ended. Even with that, call 911. If we are dealing with a child that is less than a year, no, less than one year old, okay, we have to pinch the tie while administering the auto injector. We must examine the injection site for signs of infection and also check for the resolution of the respiratory and central nervous system depression. That's why we're giving it, right? So we must you now check to make sure we're winning. We must watch out for opioid withdrawal signs and symptoms. And somebody is asking, what are the opioid withdrawal signs and symptoms? Don't be in a haste. We'll get to that in a bit. Now, we can give it through endotracheal tube. But that is not a common route, okay? If we have to give it through an integral tube, we'll give it at one to two mil with normal setting, and we will flush after with five mil of setting. And also, we will administer five ventilations. Nebulization, so we can nebulize nalozone. Okay, in that case, 2 mg of naloxone with 3 ml of normal setting. Then the total will be 5 ml. Then you will put that in your nebulizer and you nebulize. Still on administration, now the use of naloxone through the nostrils, intranasal. I've written A here because I'll be going to 2 forms of days when it comes to nalozone via the nostrils. One, this A is all about the spray, okay? Intranasal spray. You don't need to prime. You use this as quickly as possible and you use one dose per nostril. If you have to give the second one, you use the second nostril, so you alternate. You mu the patient must be in spine position will help tilted backwards. Then, after you must have administered your nasal spray, he or she should lay on one side. So lay on, the, on one side, okay? Then, the second way to give nalozone through the nostrils, that is intranasal, will be you can use the generic injectable solution. This time, not the spray, the injectable solution. With total dose divided, between the two nostrils, okay? With or without mucosa atomization device. If you're able to get that, great. If you can't, don't waste your time, just grab serene, grab whatever is available, you know, to administer the naloxone into the nostrils. But this time, not the spray, it, the injectable solution. You can't set the IV line, right? No. If not lost, you can use the intranasal, the nostril. Okay. Some of the drug here, you now through this uh, method, will be lost. But you cannot turn your back. You have to keep an eye on the patient, or the, your family member, or your friend, or anyone you are helping out to make sure that the respiratory depression and central nervous depression, including cardiovascular you know, depression is you know, coming back. You know, I mean, you are winning. Even with that, you must still call 911 or find somebody to drive you straight to the hospital. You don't joke with that. It is better to use one milligram per meal formulation if you want to use you know, generic injectable solution intranasally. Uses of nalozone. Remember, I've said earlier that it is a rescue agent, it's life saving, right? So, in opioid overdose, either natural or synthetic opioid, once there is opioid overdose or toxicity, we look for nalozone. Okay, either methadone or pentazosine, propulsifenine, nabofene, or butofenone.
also in emergency rescue. No, I call it rescue agent, life saving, no medication, right? To reverse central nervous system depression and respiratory depression effect of the opioid. So naloxone is meant to reverse the effect of opioid. That is its credit. But it will tilt to so opioid withdrawal symptoms. We'll go into that in a bit. Now the third condition where and when we can use nalozone is in opioid induced pruritus. Somebody will say that is not an emergency situation, but if you need to ask the people who have this pruritus, they will tell you that they appreciate any healthcare provider or family member who will help them out using nalozone dealing with the opioid induced pruritus. Although, no opioid overdose and emergency will take no uh, first and second position before considering someone with pruritus. Now, adverse reactions. From the use of nalozone, there may be hypertension or hypotension. There may be arrhythmia like ventricular fibrillation, tachycardia, pain or agitation you may be faced with a hallucination headache irritability hyperreflexia seizures or yawning with the forces it's likely there may be hot flashes abdominal cramps constipation or diarrhea some will come down with tremor there may be weakness or spasm of the muscles there may be dyspnea, dry nose or nasal congestion, pulmonary edema, rhinitis, sneezing. You remember, we can give this you know, for spraying in the nostrils or intranasal, right? Or the injectable ones, you know, you dump it in the nostrils. Mm -hmm. So all these things could happen. There may be fever or confusion. There may be pulmonary edema. Erythema at ingestion side, anger and cephalopathy, some will come down with cardiac arrest, coma, or even the end of the life, death. Contraindications You cannot give nalozone, though it is a rescue agent, it's life saving, if there is a sensitivity to nalozone or any components of its formulation. One is when a lozone is given, we expect the reaction to be the opposite of that of the opiates. Hence, we'll be faced with acute opioid withdrawal symptoms. And that will be associated with pain, diarrhea, hypertension. Remember, many people will take opioid to kill the pain, right? And opioid will give constipation and hypotension, but the opposite will happen in opioid withdrawal symptoms. So instead of killing the pain, there will be pain. Instead of constipation, there will be diarrhea. Instead of hypotension, there is hypertension. Agitation, tachycardia, sweating profusely, abdominal pain, sneezing or running nose. All these will be associated with opioid withdrawal symptoms. Others will include erection, yawning, fever, nausea and vomiting, restlessness, irritability, shivering or trembling, weakness or nervousness. In neonates, the withdrawal symptoms will be a little bit different. It can be deadly or life-threatening in neonates. I mean, Withdrawal symptoms of opioid in neonates could be life-threatening or deadly. There may be convulsion, excessive crying, and hyperreflexia in neonates. Neonates are the newborn from you know, 0 or 1 hour of life to 28 days. Still on warnings, we are helping people, right? Either you are a family member to someone 
no abusing opioid now having opioid overdose or it's not an individual abusing opioid it's just uh it, it, and something that occur accidentally or inadvertently so either way we must be careful that the health status of the person we are dealing with should be you know, put into consideration particularly people with heart related diseases cardiac diseases people with pulmonary edema an individual with hypertension before or someone with arrhythmia particularly ventricular fibrillation and individuals with history of seizures now taking opioid and running into trouble then we know we are dealing with more trouble we must check for residual needle if onto injector has been used on anyone less than one year still on warnings we will not give too much no of nalozone in post-operative patients somebody is asking why that well excessive dosing of nalozone in post-op cases can actually reverse the analgesia effect and then also precipitate agitation so we will give but no excessive doses seek help okay the best solution to opioid death is education like what we're doing right now so there's a way out right nalozone okay desensitization and counseling so there should be establishment of rescue centers with nalozone availability some countries are doing this some states or provinces are doing this some cities or municipalities are doing this already if this is not the case in your country in your state in your province in your county or in your municipality please write you know letter full of uh, good words encouraging words to your respective politicians to establish this for you it's going to save lives okay lots and lots of people are dying due to opioids and when these rescue centers are established with nalozone provided not all of them will live but the appreciable number of them that will live will appreciate that later on so pick your computer type or your cell phone type send message to your politician you want this established in your you know, community Still on seeking help, provide a lozon to family members, friends, and so on of the opioid addict. And someone is asking, are you not promoting opioid addiction? No. Let's face the fact, okay? Those who are addicted know they do. And some actually didn't intentionally get into that. They got into that because they have one chronic pain in their in their body. Some are cancer patients and they are on these pain medications for a long time. Some have a lot of neuropathic you know, conditions that will warrant the use of some of these medications, including adjuvant you no know, therapy like carbamazepine, tricyclic antidepressant gabapentin and you know, and so on but the opioid you know has tutored them to the opioid addiction so it's better we face the fact if that is the case if they've been identified and they are doctor shopping then let's you know have a family meeting with a family member and friends teach them how to use nalozone on them and you know let them have that training and know how to use it appropriately okay avoid false impression that self administering a lozone will permanently cure the problem no call 911 
call 911 immediately. Okay? The symptoms can relapse. So, seek correct medical attention by going to the hospital or rehabilitation centers. I think you understood this, right? Mm -hmm. You may require repeated doses in partial opioid agonist or means agonist with antagonists like buprenorphine or pentazosine. So if the opioid you've ingested is either of these, then know that you are not winning with one jab of your auto injector. Okay? Even with the uh, awareness right now that you can give repeated doses, I would still suggest immediately after you've given the first jab, then seek help on your way to the hospital immediately. Not too much dosing in post-operative patients, like I said earlier. One dose mostly before emergency room or EMS arrival will be fine. But if there is a relapse and the respiratory system is going down the hill, then please give the other dose quickly. Just save that life because what would the EMS people mean? when the patient is already dead. So don't hold the auto injector in your hand and say, oh, I can only give one. No, when the respiratory system is going down the hill, quickly give another one. But don't make that mistake. You give the first jab, you call 911. Or someone is driving you and the affected, affected person to the emergency room. Mechanism of action of nalozone. It is a pure opioid antagonist. It competes with and displaces opioids at opioid receptor sites. Oh, I love that. Pretty strong medication, right? Monitoring. Mm -hmm. This is pretty important because we we'll have to be sure we're winning, right? Vital signs. What is the respiratory rate? What is the heart rate? What is the blood pressure? How about the temperature? Arterial blood gases, oxygen saturation, that is O2 sat, clinical state of the patient because we are treating the human being, okay? And cardiac monitoring, we want to see the EKG, any arrhythmia, ventricular fibrillation, or tachycardia, that is worrisome. Examples of where and when we can use nanozone will include opioid use with cardiopulmonary arrest. So, if that is the case, whichever the pulse, we start CPR. If we can get pulse, we can grab intranasal or intramuscular nanozone. If we can set the IV line, great. We can use intravenously. If you have the expertise, we can use subcutaneously. Okay, we give 0 0.4 to 2 milligram of nalozone. We can repeat those every 2 to 3 minutes. Lower dose like 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 milligram will be the case if this individual is already opioid dependent. One thing with nalozone use an opioid overdose is we are titrating the dose with clinical state. So we have to check for the response. And how can we do that? What is the respiratory rate? Is it regular right now? Great. Is there any movement that is purposeful? Excellent. Any sound moaning from the affected person? That would be good. Cardiac parameters? Are they improving? Yes, improving. Nice. It means we are doing something reasonable. The nalozone is working. You can give auto injector 2 mg start and we repeat that in 3 minutes. When 10 mg to 2 is reached, then we must review the clinical status. Okay? Think of other cause or causes of respiratory depression. If you've done all this and there's no improvement, so look for other causal causes of respiratory depression.
in cancer pain and opioid dependency we can give 40 microgram to 80 microgram on alozone slowly intravenously okay every 30 to 60 seconds we must check for improvement in symptoms like i've said we are titrating the clinical condition with the dose of our nalozone we are not just closing our eyes and be jabbing the patient anyhow we are treating human beings so if the condition is improving then we are winning and then it is uh, inversely proportional so if the improvement is better is going up everything is getting fine then the rate and the dose of nalozone will be dropping that we will administer okay a total of one milligram meaning 1000 microgram is given already through this means slow iv push then we have to review for any other cause of causes if we cannot see improvement i think we got that explanation right mm -hmm. now the third situation where and when we can use an is if there's pruritus secondary to opioid you could see that my voice has you now gone down the tone has dropped because this is not killing it's just the comfort okay so we can give 0 0.25 microgram per kilogram per hour you could see that the dose is even very uh, low but we have to be sure that analgesia is not being reversed okay meaning the pain has not returned so we if we don't use nalozone here we can use natrazone or metinatrazone so that is the least condition under which we will rush to get nalozone but as far as opioid overdose is concerned or in a cancer patient now having opioid toxicity they are all emergency cases that must be you know, addressed as such with that i come to the end of this presentation as per this good medication that is life-saving and is a rescue agent thanks for listening be prepared to help anybody around you to get out of opioid addiction and if they are dying and you could see please Look around, check their back. They may have nalozone right there. You now, go through this presentation again and see what you can do quickly. Save that life. Please remember to share this with everyone. Remember to subscribe to my channel. I appreciate it.